All right, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome back to our channel. In case you are new to our channel, this is All Back Tutors, an educational YouTuber based in Nigeria. Today we'll be considering control structures. Basically, in our last videos, we were looking at basic statements and keywords and basic from built-in functions that can be used in basic programming. But at the same time, it's also important for us to understand the basic logic, the ideologies which we use in coding. And this ideology has been categorized by Carado and Jokopapini into three. Number one is sequential. From the word sequential from beginning to the end. Number two is selection. That means you have alternative, you have decision to make. The number three, iteration. Iteration has to do with loop, repeating a process over time. So we we'll take at this, we we'll take at them one after the other. The first one is sequential, sequential control logic. And this is um, basically simply from the name sequential, one statement after another. You execute one statement, after which execute another statement, before you get to another. You don't need to get to stage two without executing stage one. Therefore means that stage one has to be executed before we get to stage two of our coding. Like in a flowchart, you can see a sequence of statements usually contained in a rectangular box. For example, let's look at the simple code. And the code is to find the sum of two numbers. The first statement is you have to get the input. You have to get the value of A and value of B before you can calculate for C. So it's sequential. And you cannot print C when you have not calculated for C. So it's sequential. In other words, it's one statement after another. So it has to be step one before you get to step two, before you get to step three, then you get step four. Then number two we have is selection. Some school of thought might call it branching. Um, this, um, has to, this has to do with decision making. You know, for example, now when uh, maybe you have a condition to text, maybe to say, if this condition is met, then do this. Then if the condition is not met, then you might choose not to do it. Now, this selection is in two ways. We have if then or if then else. In the case of if then, if a condition is true, do this, nothing else. In other words, that, that uh, process will only execute when the condition is met. But if then else is the condition is true, do this. If it's not met, do otherwise. Are you with me? So if then only gives you one execution to make, one decision to make, but if then else is give you alternative, as the condition is met, do this. If it's not uh, meet the condition, then do this. For example, you can say, if, um, if the student has 50, he pass else failed but in the case of if then if you had 50 print pass you don't care about whether in other words those who fail will not receive any decision so only those who pass will receive a decision if the student has 50 then pass but if then they says if he has 50 pass else he fails if you look if you remember our, our flowchart symbols we use the diamond shape to represent decision making. Maybe, for example, you can say um, if a number is greater than two, either yes or no. It could either be true or false, or it either be yes or no. So that is what we call the selection structure indeed. Now, let's take it one by one, the if-then statement. Now, this, if, this one does something whenever a condition is fulfilled. If the condition is not fulfilled, 
then it ignores the instruction. I repeat, it is only when a condition is met that this program will, will, will maybe carry out an operation. Like if x is greater than zero, then print x is positive. And if the program ends. So when, when x is less than zero, it won't do anything. That's if then statement. But in the case of if then else statement, this is useful whenever the computer wants to check for more than one condition and do different things. For example, I will check if this if if x is greater than zero, print positive. Else, else means if it's less than zero, then print x is negative. I repeat, if x is greater than or equal to and equal to zero means that from zero upward, then print x is positive. Else, print x is negative. Else means that anything outside of this condition, anything less than zero is the else part. That is where the print negative comes in. Is that okay? Now, if you look at the next one we have, this one we have is, we we'll call it um, iterative um, control structure. From the word iterative, that's loop, repeating a process over and over and over and over and over again until a certain condition is met. You can say, you can say, for example, you can, you can say, keep feeding the child um, um, golden moon until he gets to five years, then he stops. So to repeat a process over and 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 over, so to call iteration, what to call loop. So by this, by this, a sequence of statement to be repeatedly executed based on certain condition. So that condition might be as long as the child is less than two years, keep feeding him SMS one, two, three. So you keep doing that until you get to two years. For example, now we have um, two constructs we use implementing the iterative control structure. We have Y and we have the four. While loop and for loop means do why do this why the child is less than two years do this why x is less than zero do this why x not equal to zero so it keeps doing that command until as long as x is less than is less than zero so once x is greater than zero then the the, the, the iteration will stop when the case of for loop, you can say for x, for the value of x, 1 to 10, do this. So it keeps executing that process for the first iteration, x is 1, second iteration, x is 2, third one, x is 3. It keeps doing so. Once x gets to 10, the process will terminate. So we have a, what we call um, unbounded loops and bounds loop. So, for unbounded loops simply means that you cannot tell when the loop will stop. But however, whenever a condition is met, that is when the loop will stop. We we'll call it unbounded loop. But in the case of bounded loop, you, you already set the boundary from beginning. Like when you say, for x, for x 1 to 10, do this. So, we already know that once you, once you get to 10, it will do this. But in the case where, or, or, or by when you say impute the value of x, you now say do x plus 2 while x is less than 10. So if you impute the first value 1, it will do x plus 2. If you impute the next value 3, it will do x plus 2. As long as you keep putting values that are less than 10, that loop will continue iterating until that condition is met. That's why we call it unbounded. We cannot tell when it will stop. But in case of bounded, you see that if you say um, for x 1 to 10, do this. You know that once you get to 10th iteration, it will stop. But in the case of while loop, it might, it might be up to 100 iterations before we can talk about 
the determination of the loop. So if you look at your flow chart, for example, they can say um, for so, 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 if yes, then you can see an arrow going, an arrow transferring command or going back upward, back to, that's going to original process, like how we saw in that go to statement. In go to statement, we're able to see that we transfer the command, we said go to 200, that means we transfer control from the, bin, from the end of the program to the beginning of the program. By so doing, that program will keep iterating until infinity. In fact, that loop is an, an example of unbounded loop. So in a flowchart, when we see a back arrow going back to the beginning, that signifies the presence of a loop. Now, when you move a, in a loop like a particular circle, we call it an iteration. So in other words, a trip around in loop, if you go to one, that's what we call an iteration. And we must ensure that the condition for the termination of the loop must be satisfied. If not, our loop will tend to be infinite loop. Like that loop that we saw in go to, in go to statement example, that loop is an infinite loop. It will not stop because there is no terminating condition that was set. We just say go to 200. So it keep going to 200, keep going to 200, keep going to 200. But we can, we can if we, but if we want it to terminate, we can also set a a boundary condition that can that can help the loop to terminate once that condition is met. So the loop is also known as a repetition structure. All right, now look at the three basic structures. We so saw one does sequential first statement. Second statement, third statement. So one statement after the another, one after the another. So A must be done before B will come in and before C will come in. But in the case of selection, you can see um, a decision symbol if it's yes, if it's no. So if it's yes, the left hand side or the right hand side might execute. If it's um, no, the other side of the program will execute. So from this, um, um, description, you can see that the two statements must not execute themselves. So either side A, the right hand side execute, or side B execute based on the decision that was made. That was why the name implies selection. Either you select your A to execute or your right to execute. Now the last one is the iteration. That's the loop. When this condition is met, as long as so you can check if x is less than 10, it will go back and execute this program again. So it will come down again and check the condition. If it's not met, it go back and execute the program again on the right hand side. It will come down again and test again. Because you can say for i equal to 1 to 10, do this. So if you, at the beginning x was 1, it come down, no, x is still 1, it will go back again. Go back again, say s equal to no. So this loop will keep iterating until the condition x equal to 10, then it will terminate. But it's important for us to note that these three control structures can be merged into one particular program, depending on the kind of code you are trying to simulate. It doesn't mean that a particular code will just use only one, no. Our code can incubate the three, or the two, or even just one of them. As, as, as the case might imply. So in our subsequent video, we'll be, we'll be going to proper coding. So you can see how we can implement all these um, control structures proper. In our next video, we, that's what we're considering basic programming languages. So please do well to download your basic compilers so that in our next video, we'll, we'll go along. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Oh, please, in case you are not subscribed to our channel, please do well to click the subscription button. That's the red button down the video. In case uh, you want to get notifications on new video uploads, kindly click on the bell button beside the subscription button. Please do well to give our video a thumbs up and drop your lovely comments. See you in our next video. Thank you. God bless you.